Do you want to make stylized hair for your characters in Blender, just like this? And if you've done it before, you probably know it's one of those tasks that just takes quite a long time. Now, you've probably seen videos online showing you to add a curve, then make another one, go to the curve properties, set it as a profile, and then you can begin to move it in place. We can go into edit mode, select point and move it around. We can press Alt S to scale this section and we can use Ctrl T, which is a horrible shortcut, but we can use it to control the rotation, the tilt of the curve at uh, this point. And that works fine. You can definitely create hair like this, but it's a bit slow and a bit tedious. What I want to have is this sort of precise shape control over the hair, but also be able to use the fluid editing of uh, hair grooming, which is the other way of making hair in Blender. And we can't do this here. I've always wanted to have a sculpting capability to curves, but we don't. Except we do. A while ago, Blender introduced the new hair curves, which have a grooming capability but also they support geometry nodes and both of those make a very powerful editing tool. You can have the preciseness of the geo nodes and also the artistic input of sculpting. Now these geometry node trees can get a bit hairy, uh, a bit complicated, but don't worry, we're gonna make a fairly simple node setup that's gonna do 99% of the job. And I say 99 because there's a bit of a caveat, but as you'll see later, it won't matter for the final product. You'll see. But before we do anything, let's make a list of uh, what we want from our setup. We want to groom the hair, obviously. We want to choose different profile curves easily. We want to be able to control the local scale, the thickness to create the overall shape of the hair. We want to be able to control the tilt, the rotation and twist of the curve. We want to be able to use materials and finally we want to be able to easily add new hair strands. So with that plan, let's start doing these things uh, one by one and at the end we'll have a custom stylized hair editing node that you can import into your new project and immediately start grooming away. And if you can't be bothered to make this, you can download the node setup from the link in the description. Okay, the way these hair curves work is we need a base mesh with a UV map that they attach themselves to. So let's add a plane, name it something, base mesh. And then with it selected, we can go add, curve, empty hair. What this does is it created this curves object that is uh, parented to our base mesh and that is our hair. Then we have the sculpt mode option uh, where we find a bunch of tools. If I select this add, then in the side panel, under the tool tab, we can select the length, something like two, and points per curve, which is how many subdivisions our curve has, therefore how smooth it is. For short hair, I would use four or six points. For medium hair, I would use something like eight or 12. And for long hair, I would use 16 or 20 points. It depends. Let's go with 12 for now. And then if I click on this mesh, you see I have this here. Then if I select the comb tool, uh, I can sculpt the shape, which is awesome. And then I can use the grow and shrink tool to control the length. I can puff it and I can smooth. Now, one thing I wanna point out is if we see in the modifier tab, we have this surface deform modifier. Uh, what this does is it sticks the hair root to the base mesh. So if I use the slide tool, I can uh, reposition my strand along the base mesh and it will stick to it, uh, which is fantastic when it comes to grooming. Next on our list is uh, we want to choose different profile curves easily. And this is where we jump into geometry nodes. We're gonna leave this surface deform uh, as is. We're gonna add new modifier, geometry nodes, name it, hair edit. Now we need a curve object. 
for our profile. So let's quickly add curve circle, call it profile curve and make a quick shape. In our geometry nodes workspace, we can add a curve to mesh node and that gives us this profile option. Now we need to reference our profile curve. So we add a object info node and pick our curve. Alternatively, we can just drag the curve from the outliner into the node space. Then we connect the geometry to the profile and we have the beginning of our hair strand. Next, how do we control the thickness of the curve? If we add to our original curve a set curve radius node, if we change this value, you can see it changes the thickness of the curve. Now, these hair curves have some very useful properties, which Blender calls attributes, that we can use to create our shapes. One of them is this spline parameter node, which has the factor, length, and index outputs. Now, the index we don't care about, we're going to use the factor and the length, but mostly the factor. Now, what this factor is, it, it's just a value along the curve from 0 to 1. Uh, it's 0 at the root, 1 at the tip, and it's just a gradient in between along the curve. It goes from 0 to 1, no matter how long the curve is. This is very useful because it gives us positions along the curve in a numerical way. So if it's 0.5, it's going to be in the middle. The length just gives us the length of the curve. Uh, at each point, it's just going to give you the length up to this point. So if we connect the factor to the radius, we get this, which is something. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, zero radius at the root. It's one radius at the tip, but not exactly what we want. Well, for one, it's the other way around, uh, but we also we want to have full control uh, over the thickness along the curve. And the easiest way to remap this 0 to 1 gradient is with a float curve node. Now, if I play with this curve, I can easily, visually, set the shape of my hair, like so. One thing here is, is if I push these points all the way up, uh, that's as thick as it can go. We want to be able to scale the overall profile and we do this with a math node. Set it to multiply. Now the slider controls the thickness. So that's that. Next is our tilt. First we add a set curve tilt node. Now we're not going to control the tilt on a point to point basis. There's too many points. Uh, we're going to focus on the beginning the end and the middle of the curve. This pretty much solves all the rotation of our hair strands, but if it doesn't, I'll show you how we can easily add more rotations. And usually that only happens on a few hair strands in our hair, from my experience, depends on the hairstyle. So the approach we're gonna take is we're gonna make a few rotations on different parts along the curve, and we're gonna add them together to a final overall rotation. Now, when we add a bunch of stuff together, usually what we do is add uh, a lot of add nodes and just add them up. But what I suggest is make yourself a big adding node and save it as an asset so that you can quickly import it elsewhere. What this is, is it just takes a bunch of values, 10 in this case, and it just uh, outputs the sum. And if we look inside, it's just a bunch of add nodes chained together simple but useful to keep the node tree clean. So I'm gonna plug this into the tilt and if I change any of these you see it uh, rotates the curve. Now we're gonna use the factor again as a basis and we're gonna remap it to certain parts of the curve. In our case the root, the tip and the center just to keep it simple for now. The way we do this is we take the factor and plug it into a color ramp which we can think of as a mask of where the rotation is going to happen. And it's going to happen where it's white, where it's black, it's not going to rotate because it's zero. And the left side of the ramp is the root of the hair. And then again, if we multiply the mask and this slider, we will control the amount of uh, rotation. 
Now, I don't want it to extend this deep into the curve, so I'll play with this gradient. Bring the black flag into the middle and set the interpolation to B spline, which is gonna make it a bit smoother. Just the same, we make a mask for the root, okay? Flip the color ramp and it uh, rotates the root. Now, for the middle, we just change the ramp so that it's uh, white in the middle and black at uh, the edges. And I'm just gonna bring these flags a bit inwards, like so. And finally, I want a rotation for the whole curve, which is gonna be one of these values. So let's make it the first one. For materials, we're gonna need UV coordinates to map textures to our curve, but these hair curves don't have uh, UV maps. So we're gonna create a custom vector that is gonna work as uh, UVs. Now on regular curves, the UVs are such that the U coordinate goes along the length, the V coordinate goes around, like so, and that's what we are gonna recreate. We're gonna use the spline factor of our hair curve and our profile curve, because it just goes along the curves from zero to one, and those two gradients will be our U and V coordinates. But in order to capture attributes from other curves in this node tree, we need a capture attribute node. And we need two of those for U and V. Now this one's a geometry and a value. The value is our factor and the geometry is gonna be our original geometry and our profile curve. And then we have to reconnect our geometries here. Then if I add a combined XYZ node, these attributes go into the X which is going to be our U coordinate and the Y, which is gonna be uh, the V coordinate. And there's no Z in UVs. Now this vector we plug into the group output, call it UV name. And here we have to give a name for our attribute so that we can reference it in the shader editor. So give it some name, UV map. One last thing is we have to add a set material node uh, you have to do this so that we can see uh, our material. Then in shading, I can reference our vector coordinates by adding a attribute node and put the name that we have given it, UV map. Then if I add a image texture, create a new color grid one, use our UV map vector, and we can see that it maps on our curve. Okay, a couple of things. If you notice, this image is stretched along the curve. And if I extend it, the image uh, stretches more. If we don't want that uh, and want our texture to repeat, we can, instead of using the factor, we can use the length. That way, if I lengthen the curve, it just generates a new texture. And also, if you see here, the grid is kind of compressed. Here it's okay, but here it's squished. Now, this is because our profile curve is a closed curve. I used a Bezier circle, which I guess it doesn't have a beginning and an end, so the factor is kind of wonky. And there is a way to fix this with nodes, but it's a bit complicated. And what I suggest is we just create a profile curve from a open curve. So add a Bezier curve. If I select these points and snap them on top of each other, it looks like a closed curve. Then you can make uh, whatever you wish. Just keep in mind that there are, are two points here. Then if I use this as a profile curve, you see that it maps perfectly. Finally, I'd like to be able to switch between the two modes, stretched and not. If we add a switch node, set it to float, plug the length and the factor, and now this checkbox switches between the two. And then let's just uh, output all our controls to the group input so that we have uh, access to them in the modifier. The scale, rotations, Profile, Material, and the U and V stretch. And one small thing, if you see, usually the normals are inverted, 
So at the end, let's just put a flip faces node. And our custom modifier is done. I have easy access to the controls and I can sculpt the curve. And in the next video, I'll show you a workflow where we can practically use this in a hair grooming scenario. See you there.